What's up everyone, welcome back to another What Science video, protein timing. Is there any evidence behind it? Should you even care? You just finished a hard workout, the pump is there, the feelings are good, but you forgot something, the protein shake. Of course, because bro science dictates that you should eat your protein as early as possible after you just finished your workout. Only then the gains gods will be kind to you. Is this actually true? Should you eat your protein right after the workout to maximize your gains? Let's dive into the science. Some of you may know, some don't, but I am a researcher by craft. Having done my PhD as well as my postdoc in the field of muscle biology, I spent the last decade trying to understand how nutrients, like proteins, interact with exercise to boost muscle health. So actually, I have done studies on the importance of protein timing myself. Let's first discuss a study I did in mice, then explore some other research on humans looking at the importance of protein timing. So what did I do? I took healthy young mice and subjected them to one acute bout of resistance running. Interesting fact, in contrast to us lazy humans, mice love to run. If you put them into a running wheel, they can run up to 10 kilometers a night. No, if you put them or resistance to that wheel to make it harder for the mouse to run, the mouse can actually build muscle. So I let these mice run against resistance for one night and gave a high dose of protein right after they stopped running or 48 hours or two days after the run. In between they had free access to food, but their running wheel remained blocked. At both occasions, so right after they stopped running and 48 hours later, I analyzed a specific protein complex in their muscle that is known to activate the synthesis of new proteins. Attention, it might get a little bit nerdy now. This protein complex is called the mammalian target of rapamycin, or mTOR. You can see it as a central governor that receives all the input from, inputs from outside the muscle cells and then feeds down this information. Should the new proteins be built to grow muscles or should the exact opposite happen? These external inputs from outside can be categorized as first, which hormones enter the cell, which amino acids are present, and three, has the muscle been exercising? When all these three things are checked, for instance after eating a big meal, after a big strength session, mTOR says, all right, now we can start building proteins or start building muscle in general. The key question here is, how long does the sensitivity of mTOR to a specific amino acid last? We know that once you do exercise, the muscle is very open or sensitive to nutrition. Makes sense, right? It just has been expending a lot of energy and wants to recover or build new proteins, so to speak. Does this sensitivity last, let's say, a couple hours or does it last days? In my experiment, it lasted days. Here you can uh, see the output of a western bot or a biochemical technique to assess the phosphorylation or the activation of a specific protein in the muscle in this case. The intenser the signal, the higher the phosphorylation. We are looking at phospho-RPS6, which is a downstream target uh, and a marker of mTOR. It was activated after I gave the mice leucine only, a specific amino acid that stimulates mTOR without addition of any exercise. Then the signal decreased more when resistance exercise was combined with lucid. Makes sense, right? Now here is the interesting part. If leucine was given 48 after, after the mice had stopped running, the signal was still enhanced. It was enhanced to the same extent as when they took leucine right after exercise. Pretty fascinating, right? This means that the muscle remains open to amino acids long after exercise cessation. Let's look at some human studies. 15 trained men did four sets of unilateral leg extension exercise. So they were doing leg extensions with one leg while the other leg just rested. Just for your interest, but not super important for this story, they did this with different loads on the bar. Once with 90% of their one rep max, always until failure. Once 30% of their one rep max, but not until failure. And then another time 30%, but until failure. 
they consumed 15 grams of whey at rest and 15 grams of whey 24 hours after they did this exercise. It's a little bit the same setup as my study. By a chemical method, which I will explain in another video, they measured the rate of synthesis of new proteins after consumption of this whey shake at rest and 24 hours after doing this resistance training bout. What happened? You guessed it. When the participants took protein the full 24 hours after exercise, the muscle was still open and hence more sensitive to the proteins or amino acids provided, exemplified by the black uh, columns here in the graph. So does protein timing then not matter at all? Maybe not the exact timing, but rather the distribution of protein intake might matter. This study found that when subjects distributed 80 grams of protein into four doses of 20 gram, muscle protein synthesis was actually higher than when they would distribute the same 80 grams into two doses of 40 grams or eight doses of 10 grams. An even spread of doses equal or more than 20 grams of high quality protein seems to be optimal for recovery and gains in muscle mass after training. Final point, instead of timing, focus on total protein intake. This graph represents the increase in muscle mass with strength training in relation to the total protein the vol volunteers took in that specific study per day. You can see that there is some kind of cutoff at 1.6 grams per kilogram body weight. 1.6 grams per kilogram body weight, what actually is that? For me weighing 85 kilograms it would mean 136 grams of protein daily. Going above that probably won't lead to more muscle mass gains, according to the latest science. Maybe if you are doing enormous amount of resistance training, yes, then you can go up a little bit. But for most people, sticking to 1.6 gram of high quality protein per kilogram body weight daily will do the job just fine, in order to meet your strength and muscle mass goals. What to take home from this video? When gains in muscle mass is the goal, protein timing likely is not very important. You do not have to run to the changing rooms to gobble up your whey shake right after the last rep of your training. Distribute protein intake throughout the day in boluses of 25 to 40 grams of high quality protein, like for example whey or a mix of pea rice. The most important thing here is to make sure that you're, you consume approximately 1.6 gram of protein per kilogram uh, body weight daily when you are training hard. Always remember, resistance training is king, nutrition is the queen, and together they form a kingdom. All right, that was it for today's video. Let us know in the comments if you have additional questions about uh, this or anything we talked about, happy to help you further. Maybe you can give us some inspiration for our next video. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. This really helps us out as we want to spread evidence-based information to all. Stay fit, stay healthy, catch you in the next one. Ciao.